Let's cook some catfish. Today, what I'm making is called ga ha, which is like a slow braised catfish dish. You can also use other fatty fish like salmon as well, but I usually like using this sort of cooking method with catfish. So yeah, let's get started. And this is gonna be catfish that I'm using today. I just have it cut up into steak pieces like this. And so the entire process is really, really simple. These are all the ingredients that's going to be used in the dish. Uh, I have Coco Rico. I have two cans of it. Red boat fish sauce. I have a chili pepper. Uh, you can use more if you want. This is the only one that I have left right now. <laughs> and umami, which is just MSG, and then black pepper. And then later you may need some water and I'll kind of direct you when to put it in and stuff. But yeah, let's start. So turn up your stove to high and pour in Coco Rico. So that's one can so far. And then we're just gonna add the fish. There you go, just like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the liquid into a sauce and so once this is reduced a little bit more, you're going to add the second can actually. So you're not adding both cans at the same time. At this time, you're gonna add your fish sauce. I don't really know how much I put, a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons, but you will have to gauge that yourself as you're cooking. And then MSG. You can add the pepper later. And now that the water is getting hot, I'd like to flip it. See, it's already kind of cooked. You can use this cooking method for salmon, for other fish also, that's fatty. So yeah, we're gonna let this cook and the liquid is just gonna evaporate and reduce. Once it starts looking like this, when you lift it up off of the heat and it looks like it's kind of flowing a little slower and it's reduced a lot, this is when you can put more of the Coco Rico on. And if you're using only one can, this is when you'll put water in and then you'll continue cooking it and reducing the water. So that way it softens up the meat after another cook. See how the bubbles are a little larger and they don't disappear really fast? See, that means like it's very low in liquid. So this is the second can of Coco Rico. Now we're gonna reduce this down, and while that's cooking, we're gonna cook some rice. This right here is a cup of rice with a cup and a quarter of water. I measure everything out accurately and do this and cook rice. I don't do that finger method and measuring it because it doesn't work. Everyone's finger is different lengths and everyone's vessel is different and the rice that you're using is different also. Not everyone cooks with jasmine rice or brown rice or a certain type of rice. Different rice grains require different amounts of water. Like I have the ability to kind of eye it and figure out how much water I need, but I need to be using the same vessel and the same type of rice each time. But yeah, I'm gonna let the rice boil and then I'm gonna cover it up and turn the heat down low. All right, so the rice is boiling now. I'm gonna turn this down to low. I'm gonna cover it up. And right around now is when you can start tasting it and kind of determining if you need to put more fish sauce in it or not. It's a little too sweet for my liking right now. And so I'm going to add some fish sauce. Shake it around so it mixes. <laughs> when you get to right around here, you can lift it off the heat and kind of gauge how the sauce is going. And if you need to mellow it out a little bit, you can add more MSG and you can add some water to kind of loosen everything up a little bit. And uh, I just added some water just to give me some more time to kind of figure out how I want it. And so there you go, that's perfect. Okay, turning off the heat. So at this point you just cut in a little bit of chili peppers. I usually like to add like several of them, but all I've got is this single one. There you go. I usually just kind of mix it with the sauce actually. And if you've cooked this right, the fish will be really tender and, it's all, and it almost falls apart. And so it's really hard to kind of flip them at this point sometimes. Yep, see, without it trying to break. So this one is trying to break. Yep, I can't flip this one, but we're good. This is done. Now, I'm just gonna add some pepper. Just a layer of pepper over it. There you go. That's for aromatics and for a little bit of spice. And right now, we're just waiting on the rice to finish cooking. 
And to gauge whether or not the rice is done or not, I just look at it and it looks fairly moist or dry at the top here now, but I try a piece at the top to see if it's fully cooked all the way. And I can tell that it's not. And sometimes if needed, you can put a tiny bit more water just so it steams better. And then you can turn up the heat to like maybe two or three. But I'm gonna let this steam for a couple more minutes and I'm gonna check back on it. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. It should be done. Let's try it real quick. Mmm, perfect. All right, we're ready to eat. And grab a piece like this, pop it over. Let's pour this over. All right, we're ready to eat. Look at the fish here. Let's break it apart. Let's grab a small chunk of meat. There you go. Oh. So, you've got the skin there and a nice chunk of meat. Oh, so tender. Mm. It just melts in your mouth. <laughs> this is so good. And so I have the sauce poured in the rice also. So it's sweet and salty and just savory. It has some nice heat to it too because of the, the chili. I wish I... I wish I... <coughs> oh wow. That tiny sliver of chili pepper is really strong. <coughs> wow. Oh man. But yeah, like that skin tastes so good. Mmm. There's a few bones here and there, but there's but they're really large and rounded. And so you don't have to pick out a lot of bones. Like this is the main bone that you pick out. This has gotta be my favorite way to cook like fish. Super simple recipe, super easy to make. I'm gonna be honest, I'm really, really surprised at how tender it is. Because when I had boiled it for the kenchua, which is that sour soup that I made, the fish was tender, but it was a lot tougher than this. It, it had more like meatiness, I think. Um, this just melts in your mouth. All right, all done. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of people have been telling me that they've enjoyed more of these sort of cooking videos where like I cook and then I eat the food. And I do enjoy these videos too, but the problem is I feel like I kind of lose the atmosphere in my video when I'm cooking inside my house. I want to make the atmosphere look like I'm doing everything off grid and that I'm cooking in my shed. Um, and eventually I'll get to that point. Right now, people want these type of videos, so I'm just doing it as best as I can. And I just wanna be able to share like the different types of meals that I can make and kind of just to document everything. But eventually what I wanna do is I wanna clean out the shed and organize things to where I'll have like a dedicated spot where I can film and where I can cook and everything. And I'll be able to do everything all strictly in my shed. And so that way it at least keeps sort of like that atmosphere sort of feeling of me cooking off grid. Because right now, like in this video, I was cooking using an electric stovetop. Um, so that kind of breaks that sort of look and feel with the whole Clueless Bushcraft sort of, I suppose, maybe brand, I think. Um, and so eventually I'll start doing stuff in my shed. Um, Raven's surgery is coming up in like less than a week, I think it's like five, four days or something like that. It's June 1st is when her surgery date is. And just a couple days ago, I started hearing these clicking sounds in her knee. 
And so it seems to be getting worse. And so I was incredibly worried because last night she let out like a really lengthy cry and she, she was in pain. Um, this is the first time in the last two months that I've actually like heard her vocally like tell me that she's in pain and that hurt me so much and I was so scared. And so I called the vet and they said that it's normal. Um, the clicking sounds is normal. Um, and it was bound to kind of show up. And I'm, I feel lucky that it just recently showed up, you know, because her surgery is in a couple of days and things hopefully will be fixed. <sighs> hopefully things get back to normal. I just want Raven to be able to stay healthy and be a dog be able to run around and play and stuff like that so i don't have to carry her heavy ass up and down the stairs anymore like every time i bring her outside i carry her out from my room um, up the stairs and then down the stairs when i come back i don't allow her to walk around too much and i think that's why i was able to prolong her health maybe because i've been carrying her around um, and stuff like outside i'll let her walk around a little bit kind of do her business but, um, but maybe that clicking sound or whatever showed up now only because I've been doing it, you know? Um, maybe it would have shown up a lot earlier if I hadn't. And so uh, there's that maybe. <laughs> but aside from all of this, um, if you want to support Raven in her surgery or support me, um, you're more than welcome to visit my spread shop. I have a bunch of different types of merchandise that I sell on there and I have a bunch of designs too of uh, Raven and my logo and a bunch of other stuff and if you're interested consider checking out some of my merch buying it all of the earnings that I make from my spread shop I'm putting it back into Raven's emergency fund but yeah that's it I appreciate you watching please smash that like button consider subscribing and I'll see you next time all right <laughs> peace out